Welcome to another live stream. Let's see if this is going to work. A little bit of a different live stream this time. Um, I didn't really have a video in mind for today, and uh, you know, I, I still wanted to do some sort of live, but not really a full live flight, but just something for fun, something different. And looks like the stream is working, I think. Yeah, let me know if you can hear me okay. That would be very much appreciated as always. So yeah, just a little different stream this time. Um, I would, you know, I was thinking maybe I could do a nice VFR flight for a change. Um, by all means, I'm not an expert in VFR flying on VETSIM. <laughs> Actually, this is one of my few VFR flights on VETSIM. So if there's ATC popping up, I'm not sure what's going to happen. But um, let's see uh, who else is in. Um, in the live chat, yeah, I can see some people in already. Uh, let's welcome you in, all in as much as possible. Uh, Apple Mac, hello. Uh, Joxcast, hello. Hookstus, beacon lights on yeah, as soon as uh, uh, we're going to start the engines. Um, Sami is in. Travelman, hello. And... Sami from Germany. Let's see what else do we got. The real MG867. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's going to work out. Matush, W Vetcher to you. <laughs> Frank, loud and clear. Okay, thanks. Um, glad that is all working. Um, uh, who else do we got in? Uh, Retro and uh, Alexa from Serbia. Welcome in, everyone. I hope you all enjoy this short little flight. I'm flying in the Netherlands uh, simply because uh, that's the, you know, country that I know best that I do have some VFR experience in on VETSIM at least. Uh, and in other countries, that's always a little bit different. So, of course, coffee is a essential supplement. So the reason why I'm doing this flight is um, also a little bit of a celebration because the channel has just passed 5 million views, which is incredible. And um, for those that you know follow me also know that I've been working on a flight training selection at this very airport last week, uh, Groningen Airport to Ilde. And um, I'm happy to report that I passed the selection phase so far. So um, yeah, now on to the next one and uh, yeah, to be continued. So. Um, you know, to kind of celebrate this and to ce celebrate the 5 million views on the channel, I figured why not make a nice VFR flight for a change because I flew a little, you know, Fresca 141 simulator for four days in a row looking at these instruments without any outside view. So it was kind of fun, it kind of, you know, made me feel like wanting to make some sort of flight with a smaller airplane this time. So. I'm going to show you the route in a minute because uh, you know the route's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be quite a long flight, but I'm using the Beechcraft Baron 58. Um, so yeah, um, it's quite a fast aircraft. Which uh, this is not a real-world registration, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, that should be okay. So uh, let's see who else we can welcome in before I'll show you the route. Um, we got California, the UK. Um, Dan, good evening. Uh, Maxili meets from CYYC. Ah, yeah, Canada. Uh, Wasim is in. Um, Atom Rav. I'm trying to pronu pronunciate, uh, pr pronounce everything as the best I can, but I cannot promise <laughs> that I'll do everything correct. Nathan from Texas, hello. Bruns, hello. Um, let's see who else we got in. Joker Gaming, NGX Aviation. Hassan, welcome in. Uh, Finland, okay, <laughs> that's nice. Um, and Hassan is from Germany. Hey, Roberto is in as well. Thank you very much, Roberto. Glad you could join in. I hope you all enjoyed this little flight. Well, again, I'm, I'm just kind of freestyling this flight. Uh, by all means, I'm not really certain about uh, <laughs> flying the Beechcraft Baron, but uh, it will be fun. And who else? Wow, a lot of people in. I'm not sure about the exact number, but uh, that's a lot of people. Uh, Kasper from Poland, uh, Tunisia is in, okay, hello. And uh, from the Philippines, AO19, and uh, Miami, Florida, Italy, uh, as always an international audience. Great, Latvia, Norbert, welcome in. <laughs> and another Miami, <laughs> awesome. Or Bar Barbados, oh, it must be a nice destination to fly. And Steve from Illinois, welcome in everyone. All right, so uh, let's take a sip of coffee. I'll show you the route. Um, again, it's, keep in mind, it's kind of freestyling, um, no particular stuff in mind, but the route is kind of, um, you know, I try to 
pick something nice um, and route that also both avoids areas that I don't want to fly into but also it looks like this it's a five if the five or five million views at least that's the plan <laughs> I hope in the end when I look um, up this flight on project fly it will kind of look like a five indeed as well so uh, since it's, this is VFR I'm using by the way uh, active sky but I'm not sure if the weather is going to be good enough so I might need you know need to just select fair weather and then uh, you know do it that way but um, basically you're going to take off from Groningen airport right here and then we'll fly kind of over here to um, this yeah this huge lake basically in the Netherlands called the IJsselmeer and then we'll head south to start drawing the five on the map so to speak uh, towards Lelystad airport and uh, before we arrive in that uh, you know zone of that airport we start turning left and then we fly via the towns of i'm using sky factory here by the way to show you this route uh zwolle um yeah, i'm not even sure what is this uh yeah for, of course it's only known for dutchies uh reisen near enschede and then moving towards uh Doetinchem, arnhem i guess arnhem is more familiar with some people and then we'll fly south of Arnhem towards the uh, west again and basically fly over my hometown right here uh, and to Rotterdam, Rotterdam airport. So that's kind of an overview of the route that I'm planning to fly. Again, to celebrate 5 million views, I'm going to try to draw on 5 in disguise. So let's see how that works out. <laughs> Uh, there's no ATC, so that's actually quite relaxed. Um, you know, it gives me also more of an opportunity to interact with you guys and uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, have some fun in the uh, chat room as well. Um, let's see. Rob from Hellevoet Sluis, hello. <laughs> uh, Amar from London. A Piper Warrior Sim Project from United Kim Kingdom. Um, Austria, Austria, Wolfgang, hello. <laughs> uh well yeah again 65 people watching no nice yeah so uh yeah guys this is a bit more in informal live stream than usual so you you know you can uh you know ask any questions that you want uh and we'll just have some fun together okay so uh i'll say just let's just go um yeah, i don't expect any 8c to pop up but uh Again, I don't really mind. So I'm just going to look up the checklist for this aircraft. Um, you know, I, d I don't really, I have not really put a lot of effort myself in my flight sim career so far in s discovering general aviation airplanes, to be honest. Um, you know, so this is kind of, again, just um, kind of guesswork most of the time uh, in regards to speeds and, you know, power settings and all that stuff. But if I learned one thing last week, it was that, uh, you know, there's a lot of power settings that you can memorize for these kind of aircraft. So um, we'll just start it up and uh, get the engines running, um, which should be pretty simple, right? I hope. Um, so let's see. I've got here the before starting checklist of this aircraft. Let's see if it shows up. Um... Let me see. Now it should show up. Nope, it doesn't want to show up. There we go. That's better. So, uh, this is uh, just the uh, checklist that came with the Carinado. Yeah, I'm sure quite a lot of people indeed uh, like general aviation better, so... Um, you know, it's it's nice for a change, and you know, gets you back to basics of flying, basically. Okay, so the seats, well, position unlocked. Yeah, we're locked for takeoff. Seat belts and shoulder harnesses, well, we don't need them, but they are fastened and adjusted. The parking brake is set. That's just this little lever over there. Uh, all avi avionics are indeed off. Um, the oxygen. Oh, I'm I'm showing you the lever, but uh, it's right here on the Baron. Um. There we go. Let's see. 
Well, we can read the checklist kind of the oxygen. Well, we're not going to need oxygen. We're going to stay below the clouds because we're flying VFR as much as possible. Again, if the weather turns out to be too bad, I will disable active sky. Landing gear handle was down. Cowl flap switches are checked and open. Yeah, I couldn't find that one on this aircraft, to be honest. Uh, fuel selectors are on. And all circuit breakers, switches and equipment controls are checked. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of race through this. Um, battery and alternator switches on. So we'll just start with that. Uh, landing gear position checked. Yeah, and then we'll start the checklist. Um, for starting, mixture control full rich, propeller RPM, uh, high RPM, throttle full open, and kind of have to memorize this. Fuel boost pump switch high until fuel flow peaks, then off, throttle closed, and open approximately half an inch. As you can see, quite a complex start procedure <laughs> instead of flicking a switch on a, an Embraer or a, or a Boeing. Okay, magneto start switch, start position release to both position when engine starts. Okay, well, let's see what happens. So uh, it's pretty much just turning the battery on right here. And turning the avionics on. I've got this all set up. Classic throttle knobs of the SciTech. Go the mixture full rich. And I'm not sure about the throttle full open. I'm not sure if I want to do that because I'm using an, uh, you know, they're, they're linked together. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. Well, I can maybe try this but uh, yeah I'll, I'll just leave them idle I think it will start up as well then okay and then we'll start uh, the right engine first I guess okay <laughs> let's see what happens um, yeah And you kind of have to open up the throttles, I guess. See if it wants to work. Okay. Well, it looks like the right engine has started at least. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people who are more familiar with this particular airplane will now chime in. <laughs> Please feel free to do so. <laughs> okay. 80 people watching. Well, welcome in everyone. I'm going to start the left engine. Is the audio okay for you guys? Maybe this is a little bit louder, louder than usual, so... And we'll start the left engine. Okay. Let's see if it's running properly. Uh, looks like it. Okay, so the throttle is 900 to 1000 RPM after start. Well, we're already a bit higher than that. And uh, let's continue. Oil pressure is looking good. And well, we'll just let the engines warm up a little bit. Alternator switches are on. There we go. I'm just kind of racing through this checklist right here. All avionics are on. Uh, we might want to start uh, uh, and the lights as well. Nav lights. There we go. The lights are on. Let me just show you an outside view. There we go. See, nice livery, right? <laughs> Why does the sim look so saturated? Well, maybe it's it's not just the uh, simulator. It's also uh, OBS Studio that's kind of uh, adjusting the colors here and there, I think. So... Okay, so I believe the default VFR squawk code is 7000 right here as well. And we'll just tune uh, 1 to 2 decimal 8 for the uh, Unicom at least. Again, I don't, don't expect any ATC. If Amsterdam radar comes online, they will provide ATC at the airports and flight information during the uh, cruise. But uh, I don't think uh, we'll see anything in particular. Okay, so here's also a map view. I've not uploaded any uh, flight plan either. Um, I'm just going to do this VFR. So uh, if you look uh, me up on Project Fly on the VATSIM map, you'll probably be able to see 
me drawing the five in the sky. Hopefully it works out. So let me just uh, check in with the live chat one more time. Um, uh, Quinn is in, going to Los Angeles tomorrow oh, from the Netherlands. It will be a nice flight. <laughs> Um, what else do we got? Long Island, Anthony, welcome in as well. Um, this scenery is Orbex, uh, the Netherlands True Earth, by the way, indeed. Um, uh, because, um, uh, yeah, I, I did not install any uh, additional airport. It's just the default airport that comes with the Orbex True Earth. And Ordrup, are you going to fly the cross ponds? Well, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to. Uh, I'm actually free on Saturday, but uh, I forgot to make a booking and I figured, well, <laughs> um, I'm not going to waste my time waiting for a bunch of traffic. Although, I w if I wanted to depart from Amsterdam, it would probably be alright, but still. And Yaro from Germany, welcome in. Alright guys, so I've loaded up the fuel, we should be uh, having plenty of fuel. See oil pressure, oil temperature looking good. All engine indications are in the green. And I will just do the before takeoff checklist already before we taxi because it's quite a short taxi. Um, just set the parking brake, um, fuel boost bumps. I forget to put them to high, but they're off right now. Um, and we'll just kind of test the. Um, Propellers, make sure everything is okay, make sure that everything is working. And then we'll uh, deal the taxi, okay? So, let's see. Okay, trim, uh, there's no particular takeoff position. I'm not sure if there's any particular takeoff trim setting on there. No, it doesn't look like it. So again, I'm just kind of, kind of freestyling here, but that's okay. You know, this is a flight just to relax a little bit and then, um, you know, um, have some fun in the live chat hopefully and hopefully draw a nice, nice 5 for the 5 million in the sky yeah I know that you don't have to book but yeah it's probably gonna be really 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 busy so I kinda wanted to avoid that okay guys so um, let me just uh, wrap up the throttle a little bit see if everything is uh, working normally What a powerful little aircraft is this. Alright. Well, of course, you would also kind of check the flight controls, make sure everything is working. So that's the aileron. There we go. And let's see if we can see the elevator from this position. I don't think so. Ah, yeah, we can. Ah, not really. <laughs> I'll have to look at the outside view for that. So let's uh, just check that for fun. Make sure that is working. Yeah. You always want to check your flight controls. Uh, I don't. I cannot use my steering tiller, my joystick for this. So, there we go. Okay, guys. Um, uh, let me just run through this takeoff checklist, and we're going to be taking off with full power. And after that, we'll uh, cruise with uh, 2500 RPM. We can leave the mixtures in full reach. I believe this aircraft kind of takes care of that itself. And then we'll fly the route as best as possible. So I'll simply now open up the uh, departure chart from Groningen so we can see what's going on. Let me just quickly look up the weather up here in Active Sky. See, the weather is currently variable one knot, so we'll just take off from. Uh, the closest runway, which is runway uh, 23. Visibility is good, overcast 2400. Well, we'll stay at 1000 initially because we're going to be flying to Lely's, the Lelystad area and we need to stay clear of the uh, Amsterdam TMA. Temperature is 11, dew point 7, QNH 1034. Well, altimeter is already set. And that's all okay. Alright, so yeah, again, there are quite low clouds. So probably the frame rate is not going to be, uh, uh, you know, super good because of all this uh, uh, you know uh, real world textures okay um, so let me just open up the chart for you guys I'll start with the taxi 
There we go. You should be able to see that right now. Uh, parked here near the Lima apron. I want to just taxi via Golf, taxiway Alpha, to runway 23, as you can see. This is the airport. And I'm using PDF charts because Navigraf doesn't really have PFR charts. So I'll take a runway 23 right here. And then we're going to fly. Let's see. It should be one of these charts. Yeah, a left hand circuit basically. As you can see, this larger circuit. And then we will basically follow the highway right here and fly a Victor. And then we'll fly out uh, the departure route. Victor along the highway to uniform and that's where we're gonna exit the CTR so um, I might make some VVR tutorials later on um, kind of uh, you know uh, tell you about how to uh, deal with all these uh, you know restrictions and all that stuff but uh, yeah it's quite interesting flying VVR because you really have to keep a good eye on things so we're just gonna fly the uniform departure out of Groningen right here and then we'll be on our way to Rotterdam and then uh, I'll just show you the route again right here there we go, sky vector we kind of uh, fly this route right here, there we go so let's see what happens, I hope I will be able to see everything properly uh, I'm just gonna set the heading to uh, to the west the heading knob, it's kind of helpful that's where we're gonna go first there we go all right guys so before we start taxi let me just see if there's any ATC no there isn't uh, let me just check in with the live chat one more time and then we'll get on our way yeah I'm using sky vector for the VVR of course which is really uh, useful well the only downside is that it doesn't really show a lot of details unfortunately um, let's see um, just gonna kind of scroll back oh yeah maybe I should adjust the title real quick of the uh, live stream um, so you kind of know what uh, where I'm going uh, let me just do that uh, real quick for people that are just joining in later on there we go so that should update right now there we go Okay, looking good, and well, Peter, yeah, it should be in right now. And of course, I am I'm flying on Vetsim, so you can track me there if you want to. And uh, let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so we've completed the taxi and takeoff checklist, so we'll let's just uh, roll. We'll taxi via Golf. Uh, normally, of course, you would ask start from ATC um, for engine startup. The ATC will give you the, you know, latest information, latest Q and H, um, give you a squawk code to clear you for a particular departure. Well, in this case, we're going to fly the uniform departure out of Groningen, VR, and then um, squawk 7000 default squawk, and then um, you know we'll just continue our route ourselves without any ATC clearance. Okay. So I'm going to release the parking brakes and then we'll slowly get going. Let's see <laughs> if this is going to work. I really hope this five in the sky will look nice. <laughs> um, I need to use my feet now to steer for taxi. There we go. And as you can see, I'm flying in daylight, of course. Otherwise, it would be a bit difficult to do VFR properly. So... There we go. We're on our way. So it's a nice little airport. As again, as you may know, I was here last week for four days, and uh, yeah, there's not a lot of traffic right here. I can tell you that. But uh, you now it's kind of fun to hang around at an, at an you know relaxed airport like this. Sometimes you know when there's an aircraft coming in, a very special aircraft, it feels great because you know you can exactly see what's happening. And um, I believe. Actually, this week uh, a 747 stopped by this airport from um, Atlas Air. So, of course, it's quite uh, unique at a small airport like this. Uh, thank you very much, McUber, for the congratulations. Yeah, 5 million views. Um, so, let's celebrate this uh, today by drawing a, a, a huge 5 in the sky, hopefully. <laughs> 
Okay. Alright guys, I'm just going to get my PVR charts at the ready as much as possible. And then, uh, so I'm actually seeing what I'm doing. It's kind of important. Um, I, I do have to be honest, you know, flying VFR in uh, prepared is not that easy. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's very difficult to quickly move your head around. Of course, you have, if you have a head tracker or, or something like Track IR, it would be a lot easier. Uh, but, um, you know, you know, looking around with your head switch, you cannot really quickly look for any details, any landmarks. So you kind of have to guess sometimes and hope that you're flying in the right direction. So, let's turn left right here. And no ATC again, so uh, we'll be able to just uh, take off. So, I hope you're all settled in. Again, let's we'll climb to 1000 feet first of all. Uh, don't need any flaps. We have one person on board. <laughs> According to the weights, I've adjusted the weights, so uh, there we go. Runway 23. Let's see if it's clear. You know, it's not a uh, super duper airport, um, you know, quality. Um, from Orbex FTX uh, True Earth Netherlands. But it's decent enough, you know, the, at least the general layout is correct, which is actually very nice. So I'll turn on the strobe lights. And. Get ready for takeoff. There we go. So let's have some fun. Let me know in the comments in the chat whether you like flying VFR occasionally. And uh, I'll pay attention to the chat once we're kind of cruising along, <laughs> which works a little bit better. For now, let's focus on the flying the circuit properly. So there we go. Take off. <laughs> I'm really used to flying airliners. I want to say V1 rotates. <laughs> All right, positive rate, gear up. There we go. It's quite a little powerful aircraft, as you can see. The cloud base looks okay, so I think we'll be fine. Reduce the RPM a little bit. There we go, and it's the first down that we're passing, and we'll have to start turning. There we go. Now, of course, something else, oh, I want to stay at 1,000 feet, <laughs> something else that you want to, you know, do when flying in general avi aviation aircraft in comparison to, I'm really messing about right now, am I? <laughs> um, is that you have to, you know, put, give rudder, rudder inputs, you know, because otherwise you will not be able to um, make nice coordinated turns, of course, so something we'll have to do. See if I can start, try and stay at 1000 feet. I have to be honest with you, it's quite challenging for me to fly this aircraft after flying the 737 for example all the time. And fly VFR. So, it's looking good. We'll just level off right here. And I'll quickly show you where we are right now. Uh, we're now about to make the turn towards Victor, right? So that's kind of where I want to aim for. Don't want to fly too fast, so let's make sure we kind of reduce throttle if we can. And 
right here is a highway that we want to follow. Well, it's not really a highway. It's more like an, uh, a larger road, as you can see. If there would be traffic driving on this, it would be easier to follow. So We're now passing pretty much the Victor waypoints. And I'm climbing way too high in the meantime, so I have to adjust. There we go. And I'll open up the next charts. And we'll just follow up right here. So for any Dutchies that are watching, we're now approaching Assen. Uh, that's in front of us right now. So I'm kind of stable a little bit more now. It feels a little bit better. And I'll show you the chart one more time if I can. As you can see we're now approaching the town of Assen right here. And we're now on the right side of this, you know, sort of highway. And, uh, yeah, we're now kind of exit exiting the CTR. So there we go. I'm glad I'm now a thousand feet again. <laughs> kind of messed up with the altitude during the departure, but that's okay. I guess we'll be all right. All right. So I'm now going up to open up the sky vector and make sure that I you know nicely fly this uh, five that I want to fly sort of <laughs> I'll try to do my best but I cannot promise anything okay so pretty much I have to be flying west uh, I also have some other charts right here real VVAR charts actually that are also useful uh, let me just open them real quick. Because VVAR charts are kind of, you know, hard to get uh, sometimes. I'll be honest with you there. So I'll just start flying west right now. And then we kind of should start drawing the first part of the five on the map. go. Well, we're nicely maintaining altitude. Again, I'm, for this portion of the flight, I'm staying at uh, 2000. Okay. So, how's the live uh, chat doing? Well, let's see what's happening. There we go. Um, I want to keep the chat as clean as possible. So uh, um, any spammers out there, I'm sorry, but I'm going to remove you. Jos, yeah, <laughs> that was a lot better, I can tell you. <laughs> you really don't want to, uh, you know, uh, fly with more than uh, 150 feet deviation. but. Uh, no, it was kind of alright because, um, you know, you're really looking at the instruments right there, you're flying a more controlled uh, airplane, of course, in an actual cockpit setting, which is a lot easier. So, no, that was alright, don't worry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for that test, indeed, 150 feet is the maximum deviation. Otherwise, you'll get a reset and the computer basically puts you back on uh, the original track. So, that's kind of the way that works. Okay, so again, I'm just flying now to the west and uh, pretty much to the IJsselmeer, which is uh, yeah, maybe if it's handy if you keep Google Maps next to you as well, uh, so you can kind of see how that works. Let me just reduce the RPM a little bit. Don't want to fly too fast because uh, that's really not that useful. And I kind of, you know, generated the route in such way so that I avoid all the different zones that you don't want to fly in, like uh, restrictions or CTRs of particular airports. So, uh, but for now, if we fly west, we will be fine. 
Patrick is in, you're late for the takeoff. Well, <laughs> you will be able to watch it on the replay for sure. Okay, so we're doing good so far. As you can see, the visibility is good enough at least. Cloud base is again a little bit uh, low. Quite a lot of clouds out there, but uh, I guess we'll be all right. And as you can see on the uh, map as well, we're flying uh, towards the west right now. So going well so far. Let's hope I will be able to fly this uh, in a nice straight line of the five that I'm trying to draw. So if anyone, um, you know, is watching on the uh, project fly, then you might might be able to see uh, the five being drawn as per the route that I'm trying to um, kind of, you know, draw in the sky. There are quite a lot of people drawing stuff in the sky. That's quite a, kind of fun to watch every now and then. Okay, so I got to say, I do like the True Earth Netherlands, it's really cool. Um, you know, sometimes the performance is quite bad, it can be quite bad, but, you know, there has been an update uh, recently as well, so it makes it a little bit better, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's just nice to kind of have this true 3D feeling to an otherwise, you know, flat um, scenery sometimes, like uh, with NL2000, which I always used, uh, that was, you know, always kind of a flat scenery. Uh, Ubizon, how high is the cloud base flying with real weather? Yeah, I'm flying with real weather. I believe the cloud base is about 3,000 feet at the moment, so not that bad, um, but it shouldn't be any higher. So. I really want to make sure that uh, I stay below the clouds. If uh, the weather turns out to be too bad for comfort, then I might need to disable active sky. Uh, yeah, that can happen, of course, that you need to disable it. Um, because, you know, it's now nighttime in the Netherlands, of course, and Basically, I believe the weather is going to be foggy as well tonight, so there's a good chance that there's, um, you know, going to be a reduction in visibility by the time I hopefully arrive in Rotterdam. So uh, we kind of have to check and make sure that uh, the weather stays all right and stays, uh, stays good. All right. I'm not flying entirely west at the moment, so I need to correct for that if I want to fly the straight line as much as possible. Pretty sure it's not a perfect five. This is kind of the first time I'm doing something like this, you know, trying to draw something in the sky. But I guess, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. There we go. As you can see, we're cruising quite fast with this aircraft, about 160 knots. That's doing good. No, need to fill all in the bochten. <laughs> Nice rate one turn, so you know, 10 degrees or uh, 30 degrees per 10 seconds. So every 90 seconds or every 30 seconds, you make a 90 degree turn. Yeah, it was quite fun to time that. You know, it was really paying a lot of attention to timing, you know, making sure you arrive at the exact altitude at the right time, making sure you arrive at the exact heading at the right time. So, yeah, it was quite intense, but really a fun experience, I have to say. Uh, let's see. Um, now, I'm not going to climb to 2000 yet, maximum light, because I'm soon going to be entering, um, you know, the airspace near Amsterdam, uh, the TMA near Amsterdam. Maybe I can show you, you on the charts that I'm now using. Uh, as long as I'm heading west, I'll be fine for now. So, let's see. As you can see, you know, I'm going to be flying towards the Lelystad region, which is this airport over here. And basically that's in the Schiphol TMA-1. And that TMA has a boundary of 1500 feet, uh, you know, uh, the lower boundary. 
So yeah, just to make sure that I stay clear. I want to, you know, stay at uh, a thousand feet. And then uh, once we exit that, we might be able to, uh, you know, climb a little bit higher. Um, but as you can see, it's class A, a airspace. Though. There's actually no, not any VVAR allowed at that altitude any higher than that. So um, yeah, we'll just make sure that we're not going to interrupt there. Okay, let's see if I can kind of get my bearings. Um, so getting VFR charts like the one that I just showed you can be quite difficult sometimes. Uh, where did my chat go? Did I? Oh, let me see. Let me open up the chat again because otherwise I'm losing it. There we go. Pop out. That's better. So, um, well, as you can see in the distance, we're approaching the Isolmere, so that's looking good. And I'm just kind of to want to get my bearings, which city I'm exactly crossing. It looks like this is Snake, not S N A K A E, uh, like in Snake um, <laughs> in an English word, but uh, Snake as in, uh, well, is it really Snake? I'm not even sure. I'm more familiar with the Rotterdam region, to be honest, than with this region, so I'm kind of dead reckoning right here. <laughs> but it's nice, it's a nice region to be uh, flying in. So, but we're approaching the Isolmeer in the distance, so that's looking good. I'm really glad the visibility is okay, because otherwise it would be a lot more difficult to fly this flight. So let me know down in the comments or in the chat room if you have any VFR experience on VETSIM, I would be interested to know uh, because I might be able to make some nice VFR tutorials for a change, uh, maybe in the summer season when the weather gets a little bit better, um, maybe using X-Plane as well because, you know, um, it's a really nice simulator to fly VFR airplanes, it's a little bit more stable in my opinion, you know, it's easier to control the aircraft and feels more like the real thing so and of course if you have any other further questions make sure that uh, that you leave them as well there will be plenty of cruise time and I'm just you know heading west is anyone looking at project fly uh, as well because uh, that would be interested to know if um, if it's going if it's going okay Let's see, uh, fly high for the ATBL, you need to be good at physics. I'm good at math, but I'm not that good at physics. Well, yeah, um, um, I would say, you you know, physics is a requirement for any flight school. So you sort of need to be uh, uh, good at it, you know, make sure that you um, are able to, you know, kind of understand the concepts, I would say. And, you know, but some flight schools really require you to have physics as part of your, uh, you know, high school diploma. So make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, just to quickly take a look at the charts. As you can see, we are now passing this little lake right here. And uh, we're doing good. So basically, as soon as I reach the coast, I want to fly south towards Lelystad and then make sure that... Uh, we draw the next part of the five. Again, for anyone who's joining in just now, I'm going to be trying to fly a nice five in the sky to celebrate five million views. So this is basically what it's hopefully going to look like. It's going to take quite a little bit of time, but uh, I hope you enjoy the views in the meantime. So as you can see, the initial part should, should be sort of done right now. I'm pretty sure it's not a straight line. So uh, let's make sure that it uh, actually, uh, you know, starts to work. And uh, actually makes, you know, for a nice route. But uh, yeah, I wish I could tell you more about this region, but I'm not, um, you know, completely familiar with this region. So uh, um, if there are any Frisians in the chat, make sure that you chime in and <laughs> tell more about what we can see here 
Okay, but this is the Isomere, so this is the big splash of water in the middle of the Netherlands. I got, all I can tell you about that is that it used to be a sea until it was closed by uh, the so-called offside dike, which if you look at Google Maps, you can see, you know, uh, that it, you know, turns the sea, you know, kind of where, where the North Sea uh, starts into a lake. So, yeah, that's kind of nice. Okay. It looks like summer right now, doesn't it? It's really a summer feeling, but uh, I can tell you that it's not summer yet, so it will take a little while. Okay, so we'll soon start the left turn. And then we will be able to start with the next portion. I could also turn on the autopilot, but I guess if I trim it well, then it will be fine. So. There we go. Well, with 170 knots, we should be able to do this quite quickly. But uh, of course, it leaves plenty of time to answer any questions that you may have. So Kyria is with a question. Um, are you using any terrain add-ons like FTX Global plus Vector? And yeah, well, uh, the terrain looks so much better because this is Orbex through our Netherlands again. So that's actually in a regional, you know, add-on of Orbex. Uh, of course, I'm using Orbex FTX Global as well. But um, let me just quickly check the route right here. Yeah. Uh, I'll quickly show you, as you can see, kind of this hump, you know, you kind of really look, have to look at landmarks. So you see this hump in the, you know, into the uh, isomere. So if you look at the charts, you know, the actual chart, you can see, well, we're doing pretty nicely. So if you're flying south right now, um, we should be able to make the next part of the five. So I'm going to make sure it's quite a tight turn as possible. And then we'll just fly south. Get the heading buck as well. There we go. And let me see. Well, just about now. Let's take a look. I normally would not make a turn like this so sharp, I would say. <laughs> this is not a raid one turn. <laughs> there we go. And we'll fly south. There we go. Well, it's pretty much dead on south. So we'll now continue to fly towards uh, the Lelystad area. And we'll start drawing the next piece. <laughs> I really hope this is going to show up nicely on the Vetsim map. Of course, you could draw other things as well. But uh, <laughs> they're a lot of uh, different stuff out there okay uh, what else do we got um, so yeah um, Kyriad is true Earth Netherlands but I'm also using global indeed so global is more for the textures and vector more for the you know how the terrain is you know divided how it's displayed where the roads and the cities are and that's really kind of useful uh, you could also use ultimate terrain for that in this case I do have ultimate terrain Europe um, but, you know, it makes the sim look a lot better. And, you know, the same for X-Plane. Because um, I think Orbex is, you know, releasing so much for X-Plane lately. And I think they will also be releasing um, the global add-on for X-Plane, I, I believe. So, um, yeah, very nice. You know, really get a variety of textures. And then with the factoring, you make sure that all the textures are in the right place. Um... Dark Nivir, what will happen if I speak Slovak to ATC at Bratislava? Ah, well, they don't they don't mind. <laughs> if you visit France, if you visit uh, ATC there and, you know, hear what's going on, you will hear a lot of people speak French uh, <laughs> on the French ATC. So don't worry, you know. Um, you know, personally, um, I don't think it's really handy if you want to create more situational awareness for the people that are, you know, flying around you. 
because if you speak in a foreign language, I don't know, for example, if you're reporting a position in the circuit, I don't know where you are. So, you know, it's kind of more useful to speak English, but, you know, saying hi or maybe something at the ground, I mean, that's that's totally fine. I mean, it's not that uncommon to hear that on the frequency, even in the Netherlands. So let me just get my coffee because it's, it's kind of getting cold. Um, so yeah, you're welcome. Infinite flights, hello, welcome in. Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, trying to fly VVAR. It's been a long time ago. It's been a week since I started the sim, to be honest as well, because I really wanted to, for that selection phase, wanted to, you know, kind of start a neutral position, and that helped. If you're ever considering joining a flight school, and if you're doing a lot of flight simming, I really, really encourage you to, you know, leave the sim for a few weeks, because... Uh, you know, it's not necessarily bad habits that you may form, but you know, it's more like um, you know, you need to be able to get rid of the habits quickly if, if any habits kick in. So make sure that you're aware of that. Um, Costa Cruz, welcome in. Um, uh, Apple Mac, you were going for the integrated license. What aircraft will you be flying then? Um, well, for the training, of course, you would be fly flying smaller aircraft, um, including the Diamond 42. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not at that stage yet, so I <laughs> don't want to, um, you know, be uh, a bit too pretentious about that. But um, yeah, eventually we'll be trained to fly on an airliner, of course. So that that would be nice. And that's, you know, what I'm aiming for personally. I don't, I'm not feeling like I want to be flying in a business jet or anything like that so um, just to show you the next aiming point for our five in the sky um, as you can see we have here also a little bit of a structure right here I think that's already approaching uh, right there in the distance as you can see so the reason why I'm already making that turn right here is because Lelystad Airport as you can see is right ahead and yeah uh, it's an you know, airport ATZ, I believe, airport terminal zone. I'm not really sure what the exact uh, abbreviation stands for, but that's something that you want to avoid, uh, basically. So basically, we'll just fly along the north of the, you know, the island in the middle right here, which is called um, Flevoland, which is a province in the Netherlands. So if we look outside, well, as you can see, kind of right here, this is the coast of the Flevoland area. So we'll basically as soon as we kind of aligned with that, make the turn towards uh, towards the east. And then we'll be flying the next part. So I'll just set the heading up to east. And then we really have to fly VVR. I hope it's going to be okay. Because, again, it's just a little bit difficult in a simulator like this to really get your bearings quickly. And look at the instruments quickly and then look outside quickly. That's really kind of difficult. So, but we're doing fine so far for this part, so let's see. Of course, the hard part is the part where the, the number five kind of curves, right? So, uh, <laughs> let's see. Let me just open up the other charts as well. We'll soon start our left turn, I think. Uh, this one. Yeah, looks like we need to start the turn shortly. Just getting my charts ready, guys. So, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I think it's about time to f start flying east right now. So, let's make sure we make a nice sharp turn again. There we go. Frames are still pretty okay. I'm kind of avoiding Amsterdam by purpose. Because uh, if I would be flying over Amsterdam get a lot worse so there we go but I'm sure in Rotterdam it will also be quite bad so um, <laughs> we'll have to see so well, we're kind of flying east um, so I took the turn a little bit earlier than I maybe wanted to I might be able to climb a little bit higher shortly well actually we can do that right now and 
and I'll be able to answer some more questions. Um, let's see. Um, Wouter, for school, I need to go to a regional airport. Which one should I go for? Eindhoven or Rotterdam Airport? Can't make a choice. Well, I would just pick the airport that is closest to you, to be honest. And the airport that you probably kind of have the most affection with. Uh, that kind of helps. So I'm just going to climb a little bit higher, guys. Uh, I'm just going to leave the Q&A as it is. I think it's quite the same all the way over the Netherlands. And basically we're going to be entering Class E airspace. Uh, which technically means we don't have to get in touch with ATC right here. Um, but you can request flight information from... Um, yeah, in this case it's called New Willigen. It's kind of a military area. But if Amsterdam radar is online they would be able to provide a similar service. So... Um, yeah, what altitude should we climb to? I mean, the clouds look quite okay. Well, I think 2000 is fine for now. Let's just leave it at 2000. There we go. Because uh, if I climb any higher, I might be starting to get a little bit too close to the clouds for comfort. So, there we go. East. We're flying east right now. And, yeah, um, <laughs> let's hope it's going to be okay. I kind of know where I want to go based on the chart that I have in front of me right now. So, this is an actual VFR chart uh, provided by the, uh, uh, you know... Air traffic control authorities in the Netherlands, so I should be able to get quite a good idea of where I want to go. So basically, um, yeah, right here, IJsselmuiden, Zwolle, uh, this town right here. So again, for any Dutchies right here, right here will probably recognize this. Uh, then more towards uh, Almelo and Lochem, Doetinchem, and then to the south of Arnhem again. So that, that's the plan, at least. <laughs> I'm just going to keep a good eye on the chart, and then uh, let's have some fun. I kind of want to make a continuous turn, so I really make a nice curve. So, um, you know, it's... Um, yeah, again, you know, which airport, you know, it also depends on which flight schools are at the regional airports, right? I'm not actually sure what's uh, available at Eindhoven. Not entirely sure. Okay, so we're gonna go full VFR right now. Uh, so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm a bit more stable than takeoff. Takeoff was kind of a disaster, but again, you know, you know, it's uh, kind of <laughs> getting used to flying an airplane that flies this fast at low altitudes. So. So I hope you're follow, following along on Project Fly, on the VETSA map at least on Project Fly. I'm, I don't think I'm visible on the uh, Project Fly radar, so keep that in mind. Um, Matt Saint, yeah, <laughs> good evening. Surprised doing an unexpected general aviation flight, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm inspired by spending a few days at a uh, small airport with general aviation airplanes, so... <laughs> So by all means, I'm not an expert in general aviation flying and VFR flying, but you know it's kind of fun, and it gives me kind of an opportunity to hang out while I'm drawing a five in the sky. <laughs> At least that's the plan. So, so welcome in. Um, hope you will enjoy the flights. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of windmills and electrical masts in the, in, this, in, in this area. So that those are really good uh, landmarks to kind of get your bearings. So far, that's going good. So, off our right here is IJsselmuiden. Um, let's see, any other questions coming up? Um, 
X plane or FSX? Well, that's of course the eternal discussion. But uh, if you're new to sim simming, I would actually kind of suggest, uh, you know, X plane, because I really think it's a great sim that uh, is really kind of taking over the flight sim world slowly. So yeah, give it a give it a go, I would say. All right, so we're now approaching the town of Zwolle, which is in this area. I'm really happy with the clouds, by the way. So this is Zwolle, at least it should be. <laughs> you can kind of see from the size of the towns which towns you're passing. So that's kind of useful. Just going to quickly check. Zwolle, yeah. Kind of staying off the north of north side of Zwolle. And then I'll be flying deeper into the eastern part of the Netherlands. I passed all these towns when I was traveling by the train uh, last week as well. <laughs> uh, Boeing 7673, Servus, uh, yeah, good evening to you as well. Welcome in, glad you were able to make it. Uh, Pilot Kirich, uh, hello, welcome in as well. And um, Matt Saints, and in the beach, Baron 50, uh, 58, yeah, must be very proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Really the classic, right? Maybe we can get a nice outside view of this airplane. Yeah, it's really nice as KLM livery, isn't it? Again, not an actual registration that is uh, actually in use. I'm not sure if they like me flying the actual registration. So, uh, and, and this is the kind of the only repaint that comes with it. So, anyway, we're passing Zwolle on the right. So far, so good. Um, Okay, try to maintain about 2,000 feet. I believe, um, you know, that it's pretty, um, you're pretty free to choose what altitude you're going to be flying uh, along VFR routes like this, as long as you, you know, stay clear of the restricted areas. But again, I, I try to design the route in such a way that is um, as easy as possible to avoid any restricted areas. Planning is, as always, but you know, for IVR and VVR, big you know factor. So planning de ahead definitely helps. So you kind of know where you're going and what you want to do, and what air, you know airports uh, to avoid. Carlos, welcome in. Uh, Lucas, are we passing Nijmegen? Uh, I'm up there every summer. Greetings from Munich. Uh, well. We're not really passing Nijmegen, I'm afraid. Um, let's see. Uh, no, we're kind of... It's kind of too far away, otherwise... Uh, the five that I'm try trying to draw is going to be... Out of whack. <laughs> so... But we'll be flying close to Nijmegen. Pretty close. Okay. Going to slowly continue the turn as we pass Swalla. There we go. And if I get lost, then uh, you can always use the top down view. I know it's cheating, but uh, <laughs> as a last resort, I might be able to use it. But I'll try to do my best. At least I kind of know where I am right now, so that that's useful. I kind of need to fly heading 145, so that's pretty much where I'm flying right now. I also wrote down the uh, headings that I want to fly after passing um, the different cities. So that's definitely useful to maintain your bearing. But I'll be honest with you, it's not super easy. Okay. So, we're passing the towns of Henno and Raalte. Again, if you want to follow along, make sure you maybe check, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Google Maps. 
which is kind of useful if you're unfamiliar with this area like me. <laughs> Let's see if the streaming software is doing fine, yeah. I think it's quite heavy with this, uh, all this, uh, you know, photoreal textures, all these clouds, but uh, the frames are kind of okay. I'm pretty sure though that during the landing in Rotterdam it will be quite bad, so bear with me there. So far so good. So any more questions guys, make sure you uh, leave them in right now in the comments. And then uh, I'll happily answer them for you. And why a H, AVH Pro, you should fly with a map only, no GPS. Well, that's kind of what I'm doing. I do have the GPS open, but I'm not really using it. It doesn't really provide me with a lot of information at this point. So, um, yeah. I'm really, you know, passing, you know, the different cities that I want to pass by uh, so far. So that's, that's kind of working okay. So I'm really trying to do it as much as possible using the VVR chart. And if I lose track, I might be able to get some sort of top-down view. But uh, so far it's going pretty well, I have to say. It definitely helps if you're more, more familiar with the region. Uh, because otherwise it can be quite difficult at times. Okay, the clouds are still doing fine right here. Maybe if anyone could help in the live chat, that would be great if someone could paste the meta of Rotterdam. That would be, uh, that would be nice. Okay, so we're still doing good right here. Now past these two little towns, um, as you can see here on Sky Vector, at least that's the those are the ones that I think I wanted to pass. So basically, I'm now going to fly south and then aim for uh, the town of Lochem. So there we go. Yeah, my rudders are quite sensitive. <laughs> one push on the rudder pedal. Now one thing you have to really learn in uh, flying the simulator is uh, making sure that you get the you know turn coordinator and the and touch the slip coal you know in the right position. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. So far so good. Uh, to the right is the town of Deventer, at least it should be. And it's kind of also area I want to avoid because there we have the um, Teugen Airport. Well, of course, right now it's night time again, so there would be normally no traffic. Ah, uh, we have a Metar indeed. Thank you very much, Saoyut. Um, oh, link winds looking good. It's very light winds indeed. Uh, visibility 8000, broken 1700. Ah, it's kind of low, but it's still within... Uh, well, not really. I think the approach starts at... 1500 feet there, so we kind of have to take a look and make sure it's okay. QNH 1034, okay, that's good. Okay, I think I can see Teugen Airport right here. I think I see some puppy lights, so that's kind of interesting. Okay. So it's pretty hard to get bearings right here. I'll have to be honest with you. But as long as I have Daventer in sight, which is uh, right here on the map, I'll be okay. So I'm kind of just fly around that, and then we'll head for Arnhem, basically. And first towards Tutingen. At least that's the plan. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's definitely Teuge Airport right there. I still remember it, so this is really Deventer area. So we actually might be flying a little bit too close to that airport or to that city. Cos Cos, yeah, it's the True Earth Netherlands scenery. Orbex True Earth. It really does look quite amazing, yeah. I'm very happy with it, to be honest. Yeah, this is the town of Deventer indeed. So, I'll just keep flying south for the time being. It's not gonna be a perfect looking five in the sky. <laughs> I knew it, but. Uh, and then this must be Lochem. And there we have some woods right there. So, I think I'll just keep flying south for now in order to make it kind of look alright. I'll keep flying south and then we should arrive towards Doetinchem. So yeah, that's a little bit of a ge geography les lesson for you today, <laughs> of the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that must be Lochem. So, as you can see on the charts, we're now approaching Lochem right here. Kind of fly in between that and then towards Tutingen, and then we'll continue the right turn towards the west a little bit to fly uh, south of Arnhem. Of course, a place with a lot of history uh, regarding World War II, so you might be familiar with that. But I have to say, it's. Uh, you know, quite useful to have such scenery as True Earth because otherwise it's very difficult to navigate. Um, and you know, seeing uh, the 3D 3D structure kind of helps you. You know, seeing when you approach a certain town, right? So. And Ubisoft, you should be passing the A1. Um, yeah, could be. Not exactly sure, but uh, that could be. Yeah, this is definitely Lochem we're passing. So I'm a bit left or right of track where I wanted to be. Um, but that's okay. Kind of start a right turn right now, heading uh, 209. Again, I'm just entering that as a reference. There we go, so Just about there. really a challenge flying VFR I have to say you know it's really getting used to so give it a try I mean it's kind of nice you know if you're up for a little challenge every now and again and then we should be passing the town of Doetinchem uh, which should be right ahead of us the winds are pretty stable too by the way hello Rui um, Slimescraft HD welcome and Lester from Haarlem uh, the active does true earth model grass gravel airstrips more accurately than the default scenery does. Well, um, like at Groningen, it doesn't really enhance it that much. It's not like a full-fledged add-on airport, but it's enhanced a little bit. You know, we get 3D grass. Uh, the general layout of the airport is up to date, which is really nice. Um, and you know, that that gets the basics done basically. Um, I mean, you should not expect every single airport to be of super quality within the True Earth region, but at least the general layout again. Uh, you know, a little bit of 3D grass here and there. I actually saw a 3D person on the apron as well, which was really nice. Didn't know it was there. Hooks test, do you check for gyro drifts? Well, no. I'm really just flying VFR, <laughs> so I'm not doing any of that. 
Uh, I'm not really experienced with that either, so uh, yeah, I better leave that to the pros. The pros of VFR flying. And uh, well, looks like we're you know nicely on track, I have to say. Not that bad actually. At least I'm not lost. You can see we're now passing this little town here on the left, and then the large town that's approaching. So this is the town of Tuttingham right in front of us. Let's see if it wants to show right now. There we go. So the little town right here is here. And then Tuttingham is right in front of us. So you know passing Tuttingham I want to kind of fly fly towards the uh, the west again heading for Arnhem. Rui, how many flight hours do you have? On Vetsum or in real life? In real life it's only 15 minutes. <laughs> 2010 in the Cessna 170, 172. Which was nice. Let me just click, quickly check the sky vector routes. Um, after Tuttingham I wanted to fly heading 247. 247. Let me set that. Just about there. So we're passing a little bit north of Tuttingham. And basically, as you can see on Sky Vector, I want to avoid this uh, CTR that we're approaching here. Um, of course, does, you, can, you, know, you can fly across the CTR if you want to, but uh, actually, you know. Painting the five in the sky actually and allows me just to avoid the CTR, so I don't would not have to call up ATC or anything. And uh, looking at the ATC, I don't see any ATC actually online at all. So yeah, but that's not bad. If there, <laughs> if I would have added ATC to the mix, I probably would have been very busy right now. Well, maybe not that much during this part of the flight because it's really just, you know, um, making sure you fly past landmarks. ATC is not going to give you instructions. You, you really have to keep an eye on uh, other traffic on your own. So, uh, the compass heading to your um, direction indicator. Yeah, good idea. Well, 240. And uh, looks like we have a bit of gyro drift then. Compass showing 240, and we have a little bit of gyro drift on the directional indicator <laughs> okay let's see Ooh, look at those fields I really love how you know this is really what I li like about the scenery that the lights of the Sun you know runs through the clouds and you know, brightens up these you know yellow fields right here it's really amazing okay well, we're doing good. Basically, if you're flying on this heading, roundabout, we should be approaching uh, some water at some point. And, you know, this is kind of the, uh, the Arnhem area right here. So, Tucker, hello. FS Freaks, do you want to become a real pilot in real life? Yeah, well, that's the plan. <laughs> So uh, yeah, VFR is of course something that you start with. And uh, Risti just got prepared and got the triple seven Gatwick to Heathrow. Oh, Gatwick and Heathrow. Oh wow, yeah, nice airports to fly from, I would say. Especially with the triple seven, maybe British Airways. That would be nice. Okay, guys, let's keep an eye on uh, our route here. Yeah, I'm, you can see that I'm approaching the water. That's where I want to uh, aim for. As you can see, the river right here. Kind of towards the south of our uh, route that uh, is planned. So as long as I'm staying north of the river, kind of, I'm doing good regarding the routes, right? And if we look on the uh, other chart, the Real World VFR charts. It's a bit difficult to see. Uh, there we go. As you can see, we're pa again passing south of the CTR and then kind of following the, uh, the Waal. It's called the Waal, this river. So um, basically, I should be flying and heading off 270 right now for the 
remainder of drawing the five. I hope it kind of shows up nicely on the map. That would be nice. Look at this. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? The clouds are okay. Uh, I expected it to, to be a little bit worse, to be honest. But uh, so far, so good. Not that bad. Okay, heading west, final portion. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little VR flight, seeing me mess about with this airplane. But, uh, I really enjoy the views right here as well. <laughs> Another thing that you have to consider right here is that there is quite a lot of uh, military training areas in this region. So um, I'm not really sure how that works in real life. I guess you have to check the no temps and make sure that uh, you know you're staying clear of any active military areas, training areas, and low flying routes. So as you can imagine, it's quite. Uh, look at this water right here. I'm just going to do a little roll right here just to show you. Doesn't that look amazing? <laughs> The color of the water looks pretty realistic, I have to say. <coughs> okay. Oh, we're pretty much finishing up to five. Now the last portion of the route. So I think I'm quite happy with it. Um, now I just have to see after the flight how it shows up uh, on Project Fly. <laughs> and by the way, I'll just post a uh, you know uh, a screenshot of Project Fly uh, because that's a little bit more accurate than what you would see on Vetsim. I s I would say so. Let's see, just check the chart again. So there was one in the comments that was asking about Nijmegen, right? Well, we're now pretty much passing Nijmegen on the left right here, as you can see. Fly along the Rhine River with the famous bridges. So, uh, yeah, I guess we are indeed actually flying quite close to Nijmegen. <laughs> There we go. It's a nice part of the Netherlands to visit as well, if you're ever uh, visiting here. Team Pilot, yeah, it's prepared version 4.4 indeed. And um, as we're passing Nijmegen on the left and Arnhem on the right. Beautiful, isn't it? And um, Andreas, have you ever flown in a level D simulator? No, I haven't. Um, well, I've flown in a, a static 737 simulator, which is, uh, I have a video, of course, here on the channel about as well, um, which was a really great experience. Um, um, but that wasn't, a, you know, a private simulator, basically, home, homemade, home built, and. Uh, so it doesn't really count as level D, but it really did feel like a level D, although it did not uh, have a hydraulic platform. It was just a static simulator. Okay. Just flying across the river, or along the river right here. And then uh, soon we'll be starting to descend a little bit again, because we're going to uh, fly to Rotterdam. And again, that will be an um, area in the Skipple TMA, so uh, since that's Class A airspace, we want to avoid it and make sure that we're flying at, uh, well, 1500 feet to be exact. There we go. Just flying across the river. 
And my next aiming point, let's see. Sky Vector is probably a little bit of an easier choice. Flying a little bit more south than I wanted to, so I'm not entirely flying west. So the five is going to look, look a little bit weird, I guess, on the end. But uh, it kind of ends right here, because uh, as you can see on the uh, route right here, I'll just zoom out for a better view of the route. Five is pretty much done at this point, and uh, we'll just follow the river along. You can see it bends right here, and that was my next aiming point. That's the town of Teal. So, just move left a little bit. Yeah, this is indeed what I was aiming for, and I'll just uh, keep flying west for a little bit. And just keep a good eye on the river. And then uh, we'll soon start descending to 1500 feet. So, some more comments that I can answer for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, flight right here. Again, just kind of relaxing. You know, it never hurts to do a little VFR flight every now and again. And just kind of relax and enjoy the relaxing part of Flight Simulator, which is important. I mean, um, should not always be uh, you know feeling forced that you need to fly an IFR uh, plane for example you need to fly an airliner all the time so um, uh, let's see um, Oski is in from Poland good evening to you and um, Nick says I feel that doing these VFR flights and stopping at multiple airports is so much more fun than doing a medium long flight in the 737 yeah you know in a way it's kind of fun and quite a lot more because it's um, you know it's really a way to really experience hand flying a lot indeed visiting a lot of different little airports and especially when there's ATC online it's even a lot more fun or maybe uh, you can fly along with someone which is also great fun so you know a lot of takeoffs and landings and you know really Going back to the basics of navigation, basically, really, you know, making sure that you're recognizing landmarks, and you know, that's a kind of skill that you develop. Um, so you're not just relying on GPS data, but you also, uh, you know, are able to recognize landmarks and follow the landmarks and make sure you're heading the right way. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Marius from South Africa. Can you Afrikaans praat? A klein beetje melksommel. And that's a word that I know. <laughs> I've been to South Africa in, uh, in what's that, 2006, so I learned a, little, a few words, but I don't remember everything. Okay, uh, the, the town of Teal, by the way, is now right ahead of us. That's where I wanted to aim for, and this is where I want to kind of descend to 1500 feet. And then we'll just fly along the river. And I'll make sure I open up the Rotterdam charts, which is, of course, my home airport. Um, so I have to make sure that I don't mess up here, but I do have to say, you know, it's kind of tricky flying this Baron because it flies pretty fast for a few of our airplanes, so it's kind of difficult to keep in control of the airspeed, so uh, let's let's see how that goes. I don't want to, you know, mess about too much in the circuit. So I'll just show you the arrival. Now, normally I do an arrival briefing at this point of some sort, so... Uh, as you can see, we pretty much end up at the town of Dordrecht, and then we fly the Romeo arrival, flying over my hometown, basically. Zwijndrecht. Um, yeah, Romeo arrival, we'll just follow the highway, as you can see. And normally, you know, kind of two minutes before you arrive at uh, a waypoint like that, like Romeo, you have to ask ATC if you can enter the CTR, and uh, that your inbound Romeo, uh, that you've listened to the ATIS, and then... Um, you know, ask for permission for landing. Then it will give you an arrival. So we'll probably just fly along the highway right here. And where the highway splits, we're just going to fly left and then we're going to join the circuit 
an overhead flying over the middle of the runway at a thousand feet and fly overhead right turn uh, landing at runway 24 I think while well, the weather was variable again I think the meta report that was kindly sent uh, kind of showed that the weather is in favor of runway 24 so we'll make a right turn and then uh, land at runway 24 uh, I'll just make sure there's no traffic in there okay who dicht by Dort yeah <laughs> Walter het wordt, right? Well, it's nice now. Of course, I've been there many times. Um, any last minute questions? Uh, while I, I start to initiate the descent, by the way. There we go. Slowly. Um, uh, Mariah Zobino is online. Thank you very much. <laughs> You'll probably recognize this area um, soon as you're flying in the south of the Netherlands, heading for Rotterdam. Um, Mike, any plans for the cross the pond? No, I'm not going to be flying across the pond, unfortunately. I'll leave that for the diehards. <laughs> and. Roxon, where do you get the VFR charts? Well, the VFR charts are in the aeronautical information publications of the Netherlands. Uh, or if you want to do it more simply, uh, you can visit the Dutch VAC website and uh, um, get a link to the charts and uh, different procedures there. Okay, so make sure you check that out. As you can see, we're still flying along the river right here. And we'll maintain 1,500 feet for the remainder of this approach. Well, we're, we're not on the, in the approach phase yet, of course, but uh, for the last part of this flight. <coughs> um, Marius, if you, if you speak Dutch, I would be able to understand 90%. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's kind of similar, isn't it? <laughs> But uh, since this is an international audience, I will only speak English. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let me open up Sky Vector one more time. Gonna get my bearings where we are. Okay, still looking good. Yeah, I should be able to recognize uh, the last part pretty well by heart, but I'm not entirely sure. <coughs> Met Saints, <laughs> went your boscope, yeah. <laughs> Next time I'll make sure. <laughs> Fly a nice circuit and wave. <laughs> That would be cool. Maybe I could, you know, kind of do some sort of, uh, you know, challenge or whatever. Maybe some sort of uh, giveaway and uh, <laughs> like giving you a uh, virtual uh, flight around your own hometown. <laughs> that would be nice. Well, so far it's flying very nice. I'm not uh, touching the controls that much, so it feels pretty nice. I have to say the side tech yoke doesn't really feel that's nice anymore. As you can see, uh, my uh, next donation goal, which will take quite a long time, is for the, uh, the new Honeycomb yoke. Make sure you check that out. It's kind of an, the new yoke that will probably be uh, used by most people uh, in the future. Kind of a new standard yoke, maybe. Um, that uh, I think uh, from the Aerosoft website uh, is going to be released somewhere near the uh, end of July and uh, from what uh, it appears it's going to be quite a nice yoke with no dead zone a lot smoother and uh, you know a nice feeling to it I mean the side tech is yeah, it doesn't really allow you to really smoothly you know if I'm pushing slightly right now you know it's really it goes in all sort of directions and the frame rate rates are really kind of getting low right now so I hope I'll be okay 
better not fly too fast. All right. Doing good. Um, not entirely sure of the name of this town again. I can also just open Google Maps. That's maybe a bit easier than reading the actual VFR charts. <laughs> the mighty Draconis. Hey, hey. Welcome in. Glad you could make us do this live stream. Yeah, not the usual live stream that you may uh, expect, but uh, hopefully it will be nice enough for uh, you know having some fun and hanging out together in the virtual skies. If uh, if it gets any better, sometime fats him, you know, like the uh, uh, you know, the update rates, uh, you know, maybe we could do some uh, nice, uh, you know, uh, formation flights or something like that. That would also be cool to do. Uh, Gorkum, this must be then, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this looks a little bit more familiar to me right now. Frames are really getting low. We're approaching Rotterdam. The CPU is kind of having trouble. I hope the stream is still able to get through. Looks like OBS Studios has the encoding is uh, overloading, but uh, I guess it's just loading the textures ahead. But I have to say, so far the transition of the textures is really no problem. Even when streaming, it's actually pretty smooth. So, thank you, Spark. Glad you enjoyed the stream. Yeah, formation flight would be nice. All right. Let's see if I can reduce the speed a little bit. Okay, so I'll just show you the last part of the route before we arrive into Rotterdam, hopefully safely, without too much uh, hassle. So, we are now approaching the town of Dordrecht again. You can see this little island on the left right here, it's kind of a good landmark. Yeah, I cannot really see it right now, but this island right here kind of marks the start of Dordrecht. And then uh, we'll fly over at Dordrecht and start the arrival into Rotterdam. And I'll just open that chart up right now. <coughs> the Romeo arrival. Give you one more look, so heading straight for Dordrecht and just follow the highway and then we arrive at Romeo right here which is as you can see at the intersection right here of this uh, if the iPad wants to update the intersection of this highway right here so that's a really good landmark you can easily see where the Romeo way waypoint is and because it's uh, uh, filled you know it's a colored it's a um, colored waypoint in blue uh, it means that you have to report it, unlike, for example, uh, the waypoint that's up ahead, like Foxtrot, which is uh, not a mandatory reporting point. Uh, and it's, it is getting a little bit foggy, yeah. So, let me just hide the charts. It is getting a bit foggy because, again, it's just nighttime in the Netherlands, of course, in real life, so... And mist formation was indeed forecast, so it's it's still doable. But uh, I guess I arrived right on time. If I would have done this flight a little bit later, it would not have been very nice. So yeah, the scenery does look awesome, doesn't it? I mean, look at these textures down here below. Just how nice and crisp. I mean, and for Ivar flying, it's also great fun. You just really recognize everything very well. Okay. Well, I finished the five already, so I'm not really bound to any uh, specific headings right now, so I can kind of freestyle my way around. It is getting foggy, guys. I might need to disable Active Sky at some point, because it's not really VFR weather. I mean, that's not something that's, uh, you know, or in real life you might uh, not decide, to, well, you know, you might decide not to fly right now because the weather is too bad so uh, 
But it is really getting foggy. But uh, yeah, you are, allo are allowed on Fetsum to just uh, use another weather team. Just make sure that you put that in the remarks. Like I also put it in the remarks of my flight plan that I um, am not going to um, fly in nighttime, that I'm actually flying with an offset so that I'm flying in daylight. So the controller knows that. So that I'm not flying any uh, other type of. Uh, VFR, like special VFR. Okay, so if you see this highway right here, this is a tunnel in real life. This is the highway that we're going to follow. And with this aircraft, it's pretty difficult. I'm just going to put my seat a little bit higher so I can see it better. It is really getting foggy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to uh, arrive just on time. So we just follow the highway along. I should be able to see my house right here somewhere. <laughs> and again, um, the intersection of the highway is where we're going to aim for. That's the Romeo waypoint. So probably by this time in real life, we would call up Rotterdam and say, uh, uh, Papa Yankee Lima, inbound Romeo with information. Uh, Alpha for landing, and then the controller knows that you're coming in to land, and he might instruct you to hold. That could happen, of course, but you're not allowed to enter. So, I'm really looking forward to looking at the uh, project fly and looking how the... Uh, <laughs> if the, uh, the five that I want to try to draw is looking okay. So yeah, I'm not really sure if this would be in a VMC condition in real life, or if this would already be IMC. Textures have a little bit of trouble loading at this point. There we go. And passing Romeo. Um, let's see. I'm not actually entirely sure where I'm passing Romeo. So just to be sure, I'm going to break off make sure my bearings are correct. Just to be sure. Again, we've already completed the five, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Gives you for an extra little tour. A scenic tour. And the fuel was still good. I took plenty of fuel. I did a bit of random planning. I guess that's also something that you're going to learn a lot in real life, you know, learning how to plan, uh, you know, actual fuel planning without any fancy calculators like BFPX or something like that. <laughs> so we're really uh, looking at the different performance uh, tables during cruise, during climb and descent, making sure you take the right amount of fuel with you, which is kind of important, of course. So. Uh, guys, I'm just kind of flying back because I kind of lost my track. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I at least... I mean, altitude is a different story, but I at least wanted to make sure that I'm flying the right route, so... Better be safe than sorry, following the wrong highway. And yes, the visibility is reducing quite a bit. So... Uh, let's see. So, I'll quickly show you. Now we have a bit of time again. We're now flying again, as you can see, across the river right here, door the rechts, right rechts. And I'm just going to follow the highway one more time. Because I missed the Romeo waypoint, sort of. So. <coughs> I 
How do you get the bar on top? Well, that's uh, Project Fly, of course. Um, allowing you to get a nice visual representation of the speed and all that stuff, which is kind of nice. Okay, we have the bridge ahead again, and the highway is uh, going there as well, so I'm just going to turn in right now. Let's try to maintain 1500 before we arrive at Romeo. go and this is the real way right here and this is the highway that we want to follow there we go really looking um, ahead as much as possible so the Romeo waypoint is uh, kind of up here. But I can also kind of fly uh, on this side. I see traffic up here. I'm not sure what traffic that is. We might have to make another round if uh, the traffic is interfering. It's kind of interesting. He's kind of flying at the same altitude. So let me just quickly check that map. Again, better be safe than sorry at this stage. Not sure if it's actually a VFR traffic or if it's an uh, IFR aircraft. So we'll make another round. We just have to be patient with the landing right here. Yeah, it looks like it's an uh, VFR airplane. So we'll be able to stay clear if we make another orbit right here which is something that could happen in real life because uh, you know I see quite a lot of airplanes holding above this area uh, you know uh, just waiting for entry clearance into the CTR I am on Unicom yeah there's indeed some uh, communication out there yeah that's that's still the downside of unicom in my opinion you know especially if you're, if you're live streaming like this it's kind of difficult to keep up with all that so let's see i mean uh i'm not still in the ctr so uh, that's fi fine he's planning for runway 06 i'm just going to check the meta one more time with this 360 degrees three knots so, yeah runway 06 might actually be a better option in that case Visibility 7000, no clouds detected, temperature 8, 2.7, QNH 1034, and becoming 4500, so the visibility is reducing. And, well, East VVR as well, so uh, let's see. Good that I saw him on time. Otherwise, we would have been a little bit too close in the circuit. So, uh, since there's traffic, I'll just quickly report that I'm uh, inbound Romeo. And I will fly a left-hand pattern to join the uh, circuit for runway uh, 06 instead. So, I have to do a little bit of typing. See if I can do that at the same time. Ah, that's difficult. <laughs> Let's just fly straight and then I'll try to type quickly. Runway 06. There we go. 
that's all I'm going to say because uh, <laughs> it's really difficult to do that all at the same time. Anyways, now I have to open up the chart again. And then we'll fly over at Romeo. Romeo is right here. This is where the highways link up, and then we're just going to follow along this highway 1500 feet. Okay, there we go. Well, guys, hope you will enjoy the approach into Rotterdam. We'll have a nice view over the city. And let me just quickly open up the other charts. Just to see how the circuit looks for runway 06. Yeah, again, I guess it's going to be a little bit of freestyling. Auto traffic is final 06, so that's good. Yeah, I know what to aim for, so. There we go. Now passing the water, so I'm now pretty much, if you look on the chart, I'm pretty much passing the uh, Foxtrot waypoint right now. And we'll continue until the uh, highway splits. And then we'll follow along that highway and then we'll just aim for the uh, runway, cross it in the middle, send to a thousand feet the approach. I want to see if I can maybe reduce my speed already a little bit. As much as possible. So otherwise I'm going to be flying very fast into the circuit. It's not really what I want, so... As you can see, this is where the uh, highway splits, left and right. So we're going to be flying to the left of that, and then the airport should be pretty close. Ooh, my frame rates are getting really, really low. <laughs> it's quite terrible. Let me just trim the airplane a little bit. A full RPM. There we go. Uh, let's see if we can see the airport. Yeah, it should be somewhere up there. go and then we'll slowly start descending to a thousand feet yeah as you can see the runway is right up there see see the approach lights so it's useful that we're actually seeing that that is really helpful so we'll just aim for the middle of the runway right now and then overfly it I can still see the traffic on final oh there are a lot of people joining in because I'm flying right here <laughs> yeah, there's some traffic right there. Would be useful if there's some actual ATC. I'll just report on Unicom that I'm joining over at. There we go. I'll just descend to 6000. We'll stay clear of that traffic right here. So that's good. Oops. It's best to push the, push the talk button, but uh, that's of course not going to do anything. Glad we survived so far though. <laughs> if any traffic is in the way on purpose, well, then they will be ignored, of course. The next chart and for taxi yeah well we can already kind of aim for this uh, exit right here <laughs> 1000 feet there we go overhead joining and i'll just get the gear down already so i can fly it nice and slowly there we go And 
visibility is really getting bad, as you can see. It's really getting pretty bad. So the circuit is pretty tight. Um, pretty much have to fly up to this water. Once I'll turn to downwind, I'll type that I'm base. I'll turn base. There we go. Uh, start the left turn right now. I'm kind of extending the circuit, I think, but uh, that's okay. Let's make sure I maintain altitudes. Okay. There we go. You can see the runway is up there. And I'll type that I'm now going to turn base shortly. And I get one more notch, notch of flaps out. There we go. That's better. Runways in sight, a thousand feet, so we should be able to turn in nicely. Flaps are down, the gear is down, and I'll report turning base. So guys, enjoy the landing. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I hope we'll make it. Again, I'll probably just... Uh, Extending the circuit a little bit right here. Just keeping an eye on the runway. Again, this is visual flight rules, guys, so. It's of course challenging, especially in low frame rate conditions, but well, that's kind of fun. Maintaining a, about 100 knots. And going to turn into final. There we go. Oh, well, we're not ending up that bad. Ah, pretty good. coming from the left indeed so it does feel a little bit windy again in low frame rate it's a bit harder to make corrections for that Whew, it's quite windy actually Landing is kind of late. Ah. Looks like we landed. There we go. Not bad for a low frame rate condition. And we'll just vacate right here. Victor Zulu. Victor 2. Oh. That's already right here. Oh, no, I'm not going to be using the... Steering tiller, of course, have to use the rudder. Yeah, no GPWS call outs this time. I'll report the runway vacated. There we go. Well, guys, welcome to Rotterdam. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed the landing there. It was quite nice. Luckily, it worked out well. And then we'll just continue taxi, taxi towards the VVR apron. Can quickly open up the ground chart, maybe. Kind of get a bearing regarding the parking stance. Pure 
your brother. <laughs> yeah, that was more smooth than I uh, expected, but it was indeed a little bit floaty. Uh, for some reason, I'm always floating quite a lot in general aviation airplanes because I'm probably just too much used to flying the likes of the 737, for example, where the uh, floating is usually a little bit less apparent. Maybe my approach speed is usually just too high in a general aviation aircraft. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let's open up the aerodrome charts and see where we're going to park. So, as you can see, we're taxi taxiing on Victor. And, yeah, let's see. Not sure where I would actually be parking. That's a good question. Let's see. Um, yeah. I think I'll just continue left on November and then uh, taxi to uh, this little uh, hangar right here. Let's uh, do that for fun. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, VVR flight again. Not the uh, most, the uh, most. Uh, yeah, how do you say that? Uh, uh, interesting flight, maybe to watch or. Uh <laughs> You know, maybe you expect an IFR flight with an airliner, but uh, rest assured I'll be doing a VETSMV VAR or IFR flight again soon, probably. So don't worry. Um, and let's see. Matt saying thank you very much. How's the cockpit so bright? Well, again, that's just OBS Studio that's increasing the gamma value a little bit so you can see better at night. And I'm uh, kind of just leaving that on. Um, yeah, let's see the five, yeah. So again, um, once I finish the flight, I'll post a picture on my Facebook page and Twitter page so you can see uh, what it looks like. I'm really looking forward to see if it uh, sort of worked out. This Rotterdam scenery, well, this Rotterdam scenery is just, uh, you know, uh, a part of the True Earth Netherlands package, so it's not really that special. There we go. But uh, it's okay, again, the general layout is there, so that's really all you need. Uh, you don't really need anything else. Right, bravo. Well, we'll just continue right ahead to these hangars right here. I'm not actually sure if there's... This is normally where this aircraft would park. Probably not, but uh, that's okay. location <laughs> yeah I did see that someone uh, flying overhead yeah probably someone who wants to be banned from Vetsin maybe uh, someone can wallop him yeah uh, yeah not a very scenic location to park <laughs> there's some uh, hangars right here oh well, you know what I'll just face this way at least so have a bit of a nice and green view. <laughs> there we go. Well, I guess this is all right for now. We'll we'll do after this nice long flight. Parking brake set, and we'll cut off the engines. There we go. Wow, the computer survived, even though the low frame rates. <laughs> there we go. You see the. Uh, the throttle or the uh, pitch change, the, um, there we go, the blades of the propeller. That's, that's always what I like about having a, a prop control like that. You can actually see it move when the engines are off. <laughs> okay, I'll just turn off all the stuff right here before I drain the battery. Um, there we go. Okay, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this little flight right here in uh, the Netherlands. Again, make sure you visit my Facebook page and Twitter page to check out the screenshot of uh, Project Fly. Hopefully it worked out kind of nice. Um, let's see, I'll just check in with the uh, chat one more time. 
And um, I really get glad you joined the win. Actually, the fight took a little bit uh, shorter than I expected, so that's kind of nice. Um, let's see, what did I miss? Um, you're welcome, Apple Mac. Uh, glad you enjoyed it. And Al Hassan, yeah, it looks great for a, a default airport, definitely. Um, this is definitely prepared. And Don Fox, thank you for joining in as well, and thank you for your support as always. Glad you were able to make it. Dinner time. Oh yeah, I've already had my dinner. <laughs> and Matt Saint loved this flight as well. Um, yeah, maybe uh, multiple legs in different live sessions. That could be actually a good idea. Maybe some sort of uh, tour to different areas. That would be nice. Dennis, thank you for joining in as well. I kind of missed you in the live chat, I guess. But uh, glad you were able to make it. And point blank, no, unfortunately, I'm not going to be joining the CTP. Uh, but... For anyone who's flying the CTP, I wish you great fun. I hope it's going to be nice. Um, there's, of course, great airports featured again. And uh, it's a pity that there was not uh, enough time to release the uh, voice codec for VETSA. Because that would be really nice, right? To uh, um, actually uh, be able to hear the controllers properly. Thank you, for Patrick, for joining in, Xander. And, uh, well, I guess I will stop the stream right here. And uh, wish you all a good night. I definitely enjoyed this flight to relax a little bit and to hang out with you guys, which is always nice. So, there we go. Um, I wish you all a pleasant weekend as well. Um, yeah, it's Thursday, right? So, uh, almost weekend, so uh, <laughs> that should be okay. All right, guys. See you around next time. Uh, I'm not sure, yeah, Saturday. Saturday there will be a new, new video, actually. It's going to be about the differences between flying in the Europe and the US. So a short little video that should help you, especially if you're flying across the pond. Uh, it should help you to, um, you know, kind of get used to the differences. Because there are quite a few differences that are good to know. So, thanks for joining, everyone. And I will see you next time.